took them and we was just going to whip them. Scare some sense no into them. One, no one let me come in. Doors all fastened and the windows pinned. Keep your hands on that plow. Hold we walked them in there and took turns smashing them across the head with the 45. I said you done lost your track. Can't plow straight and keep a looking back. Keep your We put them back in the truck. We knew what we was going to do. And it's my first time going someplace on my own. I can't wait. I'm going to visit my uncle and cousins in Money, Mississippi. 1955 was no different than 1954 or 1953. Not down in the Delta, not here in Money, Mississippi. Not for Roy Bryant. Roy Bryant. 1955 would have been a good year if it weren't for that August and that damn damn tell. That little nigger ruined my life. My name is Mose Wright. They call me Preacher. 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 Uh, 1955 was a pretty good year if you consider life down in Mississippi, where I lived most all my life, worked hard all my life, didn't know anything any different. My name is Mrs. Bryant, but you can call me Carolyn. Carolyn. In 1955, my life didn't have much excitement. Money is a funny name for our little store because the only money me and my husband Roy make running our little little stores from the nigger cotton pickers and the little pickaninnies. Hello, I'm Mamie Till Mowley. Mamie, Mamie Till Mowley. In 1955, I lived on the south side of Chicago, had a job, had friends, family, and my son, who was the light of my life, Emmett Lewis Till. Bobo, that's what we called them, and everybody loved Bo. Now they say a watch pot of water won't boil. Well, now it may be some truth to that if you consider me as a youngin standing over my dear, dear open fire kettle, just a watching and waiting for that water for that soup to boil. Uh, that's what we called my grand mare, dear, dear. At the age of five, in the contract with polio that left him with a slight stutter when he spoke. He didn't let that stop him, though. By the time he was 14, he was gregarious, fun-loving, happy, and a little mischievous. He was always ready with a joke to keep everyone laughing. 
Emmett ne never mind when I work late, but said, Mama, you just make the money, and I'll take care of everything else. Now down, Mississippi, you had the white plantation boss standing out on the front porch, gazing at a sea of black bodies picking Jim Crow's cotton. <laughs> now he can't see that something is simmering. And it has been simmering for a while. <coughs> Every time the body of a young colored boy is found swinging from a tree, Every time a, a young colored mother or daughter is violated in the worst way and ain't no law to protect them, a bubble of rage that has been pressed down comes screaming to the top. And when they pulled the body of Emmett Till out of the Tallahatchie River, that water had reached a boiling point. It wouldn't be too long before it boiled over and spilt on everything and everyone in its way. I know things are different down south, but how many times do I have to hear about all the stuff that happens to colored people down there? I mean, I know it ain't Chicago and all, but... but no, baby, you don't know. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Uncle Mo said... Oh, hey, come on now, Mamie. Mississippi ain't where it used to be. It done changed somewhat for the better. Now, mind you, it ain't Chicago and all, and there are all few things you need to be careful about, but... All in all, I reckon Bo gonna have a good summer here in money. Are you sure, Uncle Mo? Mamie, Mom? please, girl, you don't need to worry. That boy gonna be just fine. <laughs> My teacher last year told us all about the lynchings and that Ku Klux Klan stuff that goes on down south. But that ain't, I mean, that don't, doesn't have anything to do with me. You're always joking, making fun of everything. Whatever folks Negroes suffer up here ain't nothing like what happens in Mississippi. When you're walking down the street and you see a white person, especially a white woman coming your way, I want you to get off the sidewalk into the street. Drop your head. <laughs> Don't even look at them. I'm serious, Bo. Are you sure you don't want to go with me to Nebraska to see your family there? I can teach you how to drive. Wouldn't that be fine? Gee, Mama, you know I want to learn to drive, but now everybody's expecting me. And I really want to go, too. Couldn't I learn to drive next year? Mama, you don't need to be afraid for me. I can take care of myself. You'll see. I mean, nothing's going to happen to me. I suppose there may be some who said I spoiled my boat. It ain't hard to do with a child like him. I wonder if they got television down there. I sure hate missing my favorite programs. Man, I love Dragnet. <coughs> Just the facts, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> or oh, the latest episode of The Lone Ranger. Hi, old Silver! Away! <laughs> Ichimosabe. Be Tonto. <laughs> Boy, I can't wait. Gee, first time going someplace on my own. After all, I'm 14 now. I'm almost a man. Ain't no. <laughs> and now Mama's acting all worried, telling me to be careful and whatnot. She's always saying, Watch your mouth, Bo. Better mind what you say. <laughs> Shoot, I mind what I say all the time. That's why everybody's always laughing at my jokes. Emmett was so excited to board the train at 63rd Street Station. Oh, boy! Come on, Mama. I want to get a good seat. Slow down, now. You have plenty of time to catch that train. Don't do it. Let's go, Mama. Uh oh. Uh oh. what I'm talking about. Calm yourself. You are not a little boy anymore. You are a growing young man. Wait. I want to give you something. This is your, this is your
Daddy Spring. If you look here, you can see the initials LT. Lewis Till. All aboard! <laughs> in Chicago and all, but Uncle Moe say. Well, thanks for the good hand money, Mississippi. Boy, I like the sound of that. Money. Shoot, how bad can things be in a place with a name like that? Don't have no running water, but there's a pump outside. Pump? Got an outhouse. That's the bathroom. That's outside, too. Our house? <laughs> well, that may take a little getting used to. Now, we collect our eggs every morning so we can have breakfast, or we take them to town. But selling that the grocery. Town? Hot dog! That's when I'll be wearing my good suit. Oh, boy. Don't folks at that store don't be caring what you be wearing. To tell the truth, folks around here don't be doing much dressing up. Unless it's Sunday and we go on the meeting. I'm going to have me some fun for almost a whole month. <laughs> Oh, yeah, listen to how I spell Mississippi. M I crooked letter, crooked letter I, crooked letter, crooked letter I. Come back, come back I. Boy, stop that crooked letter, crooked letter I, crooked letter, crooked letter I. Come back, come back I. Stop it! Can we say stop that? Now, son, I know you're a good boy, but you listen to me good now. Watch your mouth and watch your manners. Watch your mouth and watch, watch your manners. Now, these white folks down here may be God-fearing and decent, but you still a color boy. You understand? Because it'd be best if you can remember that. Sorry, Uncle Mose. All right, son. Boy, everybody down here sure is serious. You still a colored boy, you understand? <laughs> Shoot, I might even meet me a pretty girl down here. They say these country girls are really something. Hmm, maybe I ought to practice a little. Hi, my name is Emmett. <laughs> Hello. My name is Emmett Lewis Till. <laughs> Everybody calls me Bo. <laughs> I'd never seen such a handsome colored man before. I knew right away that he was different and that, that he wasn't from around here. The way he dressed, the way he carried himself, and the way he looked at me with those beautiful eyes. And when, when he smiled at me, I thought I was going to melt right out of my dress. <laughs> I couldn't help it. I was so nervous and embarrassed. I hoped he didn't sense what I was thinking and feeling. But something told me he knew. In a heartbeat, something exchanged between us. Yes, sir. Folks around here come to listen to me. Believe I know what I'm saying. Know what it is I'm talking about. So when I went over to Greenwood and told Sheriff Smith what happened, told him about the men's coming to my house in the wee hours. Somebody's out there, Uncle Mose. Who's there? This is Roy Pryan. Open up. Who's out there, Uncle Mose? Come on, Uncle, open up if you know what's good for you. What they want, Uncle Mose? They ain't got no business with me, Uncle Mose. I ain't do nothing. Open up, old man. You know what we come for. You just bring me on out that foul-mouthed nigga from up north, and then we'll go. What you do, boy? I need to know why those white folks is at my door knocking that kind of knock. Answer me quick, boy. I didn't do nothing. I mean, the lady in the store was kind of pretty. But way too stuck up if you ask me. And when I put the money in her hand, she kind of jerked. Boy, are you crazy? That's Miss Carolyn. She's 
she's the wife of the white man that's knocking at my door right now. Oh, Lord, have mercy. They got me up out of bed with that flashlight in my eyes and told me to get dressed. Hurry up, nigger, and put them shoes on. I don't wear shoes without socks. I said hurry up. <laughs> please, sir. I'll give you all the money that we have, but only please don't take the boy from this house. How old are you, preacher? 64. You want to live to see 65? They took him. They just took him. They got him up and marched him into that yard and told him to lie down in the back of the pickup truck. He obeyed, and they drove away. truck came to a stop and they made me get out of the truck. I saw the pretty lady who worked inside of the candy store standing inside of the doorway to a house. She pointed at me and said, that's him, and closed the door. They put me back into the truck where another man was waiting. I was almost relieved until he grabbed me and held me down on the floor of the truck. I was too scared to scream, but he had his hand over my mouth anyway. We rolled off into the night. After a while, the truck stopped, and we all got out. We walked toward a barn. It was so, so dark, and I was so scared. I let go of myself right through my pants, <laughs> and they laughed at me. Hearing them laugh made me think that maybe I would be okay. That maybe they weren't as bad as they seemed. But then the big one with the bald head hit me in the stomach so hard I couldn't breathe. I felt pain so bad. I thought that I would die on the spot. And then they started cursing at me. Dirty smart nigga. Up and up and up and up nigga. They beat me with their pistols. They beat me with their fists. They hit me anywhere and everywhere. Why are you doing this to me? You know why, nigga. I said I didn't do anything. I said I was sorry anyway. They kept beating me. Mama! I don't remember when I stopped feeling pain. I know it was right before they stopped beating me. I saw them take a sharp, heavy object and chop me at the top of my head. They beat me and kicked me some more. Then one of them shot me in the head. But I couldn't feel anything. It was like it wasn't me anymore. I had to make the call. Maybe? All the rapists have been made. Uh, you need to get down here. The funeral for Emmett will be tomorrow here in Mississippi. Funeral? Bury <coughs> my son in Mississippi? I don't think Maybe so. Maybe we need to put that boy on the ground. He needs to rest in peace. It's bad enough he came for a vacation and he's coming home now to me in a box. But make no mistake, he's coming home. Mamie, I did everything I could. That boy is my blood too. I mean, I prayed day in and day out that boy would be all right. 
And these white folks down here done threatened us all. And Mamie, I need to tell it all to you now. They've done some terrible thing to his body. Girl, you, you don't want to see what they've done to Emmett. I want the whole world to see what they've done to my Emmett. Roy Branch and J.W. Milam, the men responsible for the death of Emmett Till, were indicted for murder and would go to trial. When certain citizens of Mississippi learned that Mamie Till would attend trial, she began receiving dozens of hate letters. Some even contained vile photos. She also received death threats over the phone. You set one foot in Mississippi, and we will blow your head off. I can't believe they were going to put my son in the ground without my permission in Mississippi, locked in a box like he was nothing. That day, I defied the state of Mississippi. Folks were scared to open the box. You won't open it, give me a hand. I walked slowly to the body. The trial began on September the 19th, 1955, a little shy of a month since the night they took Emmett Till. We will proceed with the case of the state of Mississippi versus Roy Bryant and J.W. Milam 
in the kidnap and murder of Emmett Lewis Till. We will hear witness for the prosecution. Your witness, Mr. Prosecutor. Place your hand on this here body. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Mr. Wright, it's a brave thing you're doing. You know, ain't no black man ever gone against no white man in the Mississippi court. It could very well cost you your life. <coughs> well, uh, after what they did to Emmett, I don't much care what happened to me. I told Mecca Evers from the NAACP, and I promised my niece Mamie that if they brought these men to justice, I'd be here to testify. According to your testimony, you said there were four persons that came to your house that night? Yes, sir. Uncle Mose, is it true that you're 64 years of age? I am. I don't see how a man with 64-year-old eyes can positively identify four men in the dark at night by flashlight pointed mostly in his direction. I know what I saw. <laughs> Three men come up on my porch, and the fourth was laid out in the truck. The fourth person? Was he a white man? I don't think so. He may have been Negro. He sure acted like a Negro. He stayed outside. Mimi, where do you live? I live in Chicago, Illinois. Mimi, the body pulled from the Tallahatchie River on Wednesday, September 1st, 1955, following the kidnapping of your son on Sunday, August 28th of the same year, has been identified as Emmett Lewis Till. Is that true? Yes, sir. And who made this identification? I positively identified him. Beyond a shadow of a doubt, it was my son. Mimi. <coughs> Do you recognize this ring? Yes, it belonged to Emmett's father, Louis Till. He was a soldier fighting overseas when he died. You can see his engraved initials, LT. I gave Emmett the ring just before he left to go on his vacation to Mississippi. The prosecution has ascertained that this is the ring the deceased was wearing when he was pulled from the Tallahatchie River. No further questions. Come on, Mamie! Isn't it true that as we sit here and waste the taxpayers' time and money that your son is walking the streets of Detroit free as a bird with his grandfather? No, sir, absolutely Isn't not. Isn't it true that you conspired with the NAACP to dig up a body out of the cemetery, put that ring on its finger, Weigh it down, throw it in the river, and claim it was your son. Heavens, no! I have one more question. Do you have a life insurance policy on your son, Emmett? Yes, sir. Does it provide for double indemnity in the case of accidental death? for murder. Yes, sir, but... No further question. Men of the jury, the fact is, murder is murder, whether white or black. They kidnapped and murdered that boy and to hide that dastardly, cowardly act. They wrapped barbed wire around his neck, tied him to a heavy gin fan, and threw him in the river for the turtles and fish. The defendants were dripping with the blood of Emmett Till. Gentlemen of the jury, the facts are these men did not kill Emmett Till. They released him without harm. B, there is no proof that Emmett Till was killed. However, a white woman was insulted and our gentle southern way of living was savagely attacked. I want you to tell me where under God's shining sun is the land of the free and the home of the brave if you don't turn these boys loose. Your forefathers will absolutely turn over in their graves if these boys were convicted on such flimsy evidence as this. The jury reached the decision 
after deliberating for little more than an hour. It was said that they were told to take their time to make it look good. They sent beer and soda before returning a verdict. Not, Not guilty. guilty. They tell me that the murderers lit cigars and kissed their wives and hugged their children, the sons and daughters, who will inherit the legacy of their evil fathers. I couldn't help it, but as I imagined them embracing their children, I longed for one more minute with them. Emmett Lewis Till is a martyr, a sacrificial lamb, and because he was murdered and the way he was murdered, made to save thousands from a fate worse than death. Emmett's death made people angry, and many turned that anger into action. Hey, everybody! I got some new jokes! Oh. Why did the man put his money in the freezer? Why? Why? He wanted cold, hard cash! <laughs> <laughs> and what do you get when you cross a snowman with a vampire? <laughs> what did the fish say when he swam into the wall? Damn! <laughs> Why did the jelly wobble? Why? Because it's on a milkshake! <laughs> What did the porcupine say to the cactus? Is that you, mommy? <laughs> Why did the girl throw the clock out the window? Because she wanted to see Tom fly! Emmett and the judge. Yeah.